Welcome to the African Diaspora channel. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Richard Sudan. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support the channel and to spread the word. Now, the reason we need to talk today is because there's been a major development into the case of Kendrick uh, Johnson. And before we get into that development, I just want to give a bit of background for those of you that may not know about the case of the death of Kendrick Johnson, which many people have said was a murder from the get go. Now, Kendrick Johnson was a 17 year old black teenager uh, from Georgia. And Kendrick Johnson, who was a star athlete at his high school, was basically found um, dead rolled up literally dead in a gymnasium mat in one of the school uh, gyms where he attended and from the get-go the authorities very quickly and i mean extremely quickly they ruled that kendrick's johnson uh, kendrick johnson's death was an accident now the family and community from the get-go really never believed uh, this state of affairs uh, and they believed it first of all because um, it was too fast. There was never really a thorough investigation into a lot of the evidence. Uh, very quickly, the authorities ruled it was an accident. Now, from the get-go, there were a couple of names, one name in particular, uh, which kept surfacing uh, regarding Kendrick Johnson's death, and that name is Brian Bell. And what it's rumoured to believe, what people are saying, is that there was an argument between Kendrick Johnson and Brian Bell in the gymnasium where Kendrick was found dead. Now, Brian Bell was also a star uh, athlete at the high school, as was Kendrick Johnson, and Kendrick Johnson was extremely popular. Now, many people believe there was an argument between Brian Bell and Kendrick Johnson over Brian Bell's uh, girlfriend, and people say that Brian Bell, in a fit of roid rage, basically hit Kendrick Johnson with a 45 pound weight, broke Kendrick Johnson's neck, killed Kendrick Johnson, and then they basically stuffed this young man's body into a gymnasium mat where he was then found on the morning of January the 11th, uh, 2013, after he was reported missing the night before uh, by his parents. Now, of course, the official narrative was that Kendrick Johnson died from positional asphyxia, I think it's called, which basically the suggestion there is that Kendrick Johnson climbed into this gymnasium mat, basically got stuck and suffocated to death. And they tried to say that Kendrick Johnson was retrieving a pair of sneakers where he used to stash his sneakers and he died in this gym mat. Now, no one really believed this from the get go. And it's only really because of the commitment and the perseverance of Kendrick Johnson's family who refused to accept the narrative that Kendrick Johnson had died accidentally that the case managed to get this far. Now, the family actually managed to push for a couple of autopsies, which eventually happened. And lo and behold, the results from the autopsy revealed that Kendrick Johnson had actually died from blunt force trauma to his neck, which is entirely consistent uh, with the allegation that he was murdered. Uh, one of the other things which raised massive suspicion is that during the autopsy process, it came to light that Kendrick Johnson's organs had been removed from his body and his body had actually been stuffed with newspaper. And again, this is consistent uh, with the idea that there was a, a cover-up. Uh, we also have... Um, uh, questions around um, there was blood found um, around the scene of where Kendrick was found and it wasn't Kendrick's blood and it wasn't blood by the mat this was blood on the wall and elsewhere and it wasn't Kendrick Johnson's blood but apparently that wasn't even looked into properly there was a sweatshirt that was found nearby that was never really looked into properly and there's a whole lot of other information and evidence that can be found by the independent investigative work uh, that has been done online. Now, the um, actually, before we get into this, let's listen to uh, what Kendrick Johnson's mother um, has to say. The family have been extremely vocal in pushing for a new investigation. Let's listen to what Kendrick's mother has to say about what she thinks about her son's death. Let's take a listen. At last eight years have been hard. They've been trying time. They have literally tried to break the Johnson family but we stand tall. We're not going nowhere. We know at the end of the day, if we don't stand up for Kendrick Johnson, nobody else will. And we're going to continue to fight for Kendrick. We don't know where this is going to lead us. We're, we're yeah. excited. But, you know, we know we're still in a heck of a fight. So we're going to continue to fight. 
we're not going nowhere. We're going to continue to let people know it's not okay to kill somebody and no one be held accountable, um, be held accountable for it. Like, Kendrick life matter to us. No matter who else life don't, it don't matter to Kendrick life. And we're going to continue. So as you can see, uh, the family uh, do not believe Kendrick died accidentally. They believe he was murdered and they believe, as many others do, that Brian Bell is the main culprit and that Brian Bell uh, basically murdered Kendrick Johnson and tried to cover it up. Now, interestingly enough, Brian Bell's father was a guy called Rick Bell, who was actually a retired FBI agent and a lot of people are saying that Rick Bell essentially helped to cover up his son's murder in collaboration uh, with the local authorities. There's big question marks actually about the CCTV footage uh, which captured Kendrick Johnson's last precious moments on earth as he entered the gym and there's the question, there's the belief that the CCTV evidence which was later looked at was corrupted, there were chunks of it missing which might have been crucial pieces of investigation uh, regarding um, the uh, investigation into Kendrick's uh, death. Now fairly recently the investigation um, under new authorities, a new sheriff I believe, uh, the investigation into Kendrick's uh, death was finally reopened after a massive push from his family and a lot of people that are sympathetic in the public. Uh, there are millions of people actually which have been calling, demanding, pushing for a new investigation into the death of Kendrick Johnson. This investigation is now opened and now what we're hearing is there is apparently a confession tape somebody confessing to murdering Kendrick Johnson and apparently this tape was passed to the family and apparently that tape has now been passed to the authorities. They're gonna catch me anyways. I should have never done this. I was young and stupid. Kendrick didn't deserve this man. A couple of seconds go by and he ends with a very tearful, they're going to catch me anyways. Now, I would say from what I've seen in the media, um, some in the media are already suggesting that the local police have said uh, we're checking the authenticity of this confession tape. So, yeah, we can make of that what we will. But for now, we know that the tape uh, is being looked at. Um, and I think also a lot of people are mindful of really, uh, you know, Georgia is one of the most racist places in the United States, arguably one of the most racist places on planet Earth. This is the place where, you know, probably countless uh, black people have been killed and it's been ruled as uh, accidental or suicides. And really, these black people have died at the hands of white supremacists. You know, you have places like Forsyth County in Georgia, one of those racist sundown towns. And you have cases like Tamala Horsford, again, a black woman who it is said died accidentally, but which nobody believes. You know, most people believe Tamla Horsford uh, was murdered and that was a cover up. And of course, you have the case of Ahmed Arbery, who was literally hunted down and lynched by the racist white supremacists. Um, Gregory and Travis McMichael and also uh, Roddy Bryan and actually we know from that case that the local state government apparatus basically conspired to almost let the McMichaels get away with it entirely who knows they may still get away with it but actually were it not for the video of Ahmed Arbery uh, being leaked and being shared around the world you know, the McMichaels never even would have been arrested and that's just the racist reality of the you know structural racism that exists in Georgia so you know for now we know with the case of Kendrick Johnson the case is open the authorities are looking at the uh, uh, confession tape which has been handed to them but I think everybody should really be sharing information about this case keeping the momentum up Kendrick Johnson was a young black man 17 years old died in the prime of his life found stuffed into a gymnasium mat um, you know the idea that the culprits uh, the idea that Brian Bell if he did this murder got away with it is unconscionable and uh, let's see where the investigation goes but we know that uh, Georgia has an extremely racist history you only have to learn about Oscarville the history at Lake Lanier uh, Lake Lanier to know this is a deeply uh, racist uh, place and uh, yeah so let's see where this case goes 
uh, all power, solidarity, and ultimately love to Kendrick Johnson's uh, family. They've been pushing for a new investigation for years now. One can only imagine, really, the uh, the strength it must have taken and how difficult it must have been through this whole process for them. But thank God that they did another autopsy on Kendrick Johnson that brought to light the fact that Kendrick Johnson was killed by blunt force trauma to his neck. Kendrick Johnson, like so many other black people that have died at the hands of white supremacists and died as a result of racism in the United States, deserve justice. Their families deserve justice. Their families need closure. So yeah, let's hope this is the beginning of finally a new investigation, um, a new piece of evidence in the investigation into Kendrick Johnson's uh, death. And let's hope it can finally lead uh, to murder charges, uh, which many people have wanted it to uh, lead to for some time now. So yeah, uh, get involved in um, spreading the word about the case of Kendrick Johnson. We'll keep an eye on the developments here at the African Diaspora channel. Let us know what you think about this case and others in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support the platform. I'm Richard Sudan. This is the African Diaspora channel and we will see you next time.